All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tamba. I'm the uh, organizer for our Black Star Pan-African community in Jahadzi, Ghana. And, and tonight I'm here to go over a public conference call uh, for today's date, January 24th. I'm looking to talk about all of the full details as far as the foundation of what we have built to what we have set up now. Right, so that from the newsletter, uh, you'll see our, our logo titled Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. Uh, the corporate name is Black Star Pan-African Community. Repatriation is always just that energy to connect with Pan-Africanism as far as us moving from the African diaspora or connecting from the African diaspora to the African continent and us also being more of a Pan-African energy since our people are all over the, the globe, all over Africa and all over the world. And so the first picture we have here is a picture that we actually took in December of uh, 2019. And this was the first time I actually saw the land in December. Right? So now let me just back up uh, from December of 2019. Uh, we first actually started a project in September of 2019. And go back before that in the summer of 2019, uh, we we're working on a project called Garvey Town. And, uh, we weren't able to have our flexibility to build what we needed to build and do what we needed to do. Uh, so I advise people that uh, we just, if they're not happy, uh, let me organize something for us to where you can be you know, close to the beach, you can have uh, nice flexible arrangements, you can you know, be the core energy of the group to make your decisions and work on what needs to be worked on and make the group work you know, for all individuals. Uh, so. With all of that, uh, we came up with energy called Black Star Pan-African Community. And then to start the whole legal process. So here we have a lawyer. He did all of our legal paperwork for 15 acres and also 50 acres. So we have phase one and phase two in process. Phase one is clear. Phase two, you're just doing payments because the land is being paid for. So we did pay for the first 15 acres but the next one is the 50 acres, and both of it is connected. And as I talk more, I'm going to show you all of the live documentation to show everything. But this one of those lets everyone know up front the situation. And so as we begin to continue what we're doing, you know, we're, the next thing is really just to pay off the 50 acres by making payments and payments on it uh, for a period of um, anywhere from one to one and a half years. And if we need an extension, and we'll work it out with the chief. Uh, but this is one of those situations where we're working through all the legal process. Uh, so that's why we have our attorney there. Uh, the chief is a paramount chief. That's his jurisdiction, right, the Jihadzi, uh, which covers the area by the beach and also cover our area. And then myself right there in the middle, then the surveyor, which has been replaced by another surveyor, and then uh, my good brother, uh, which is our tour guide, but also our consultant on this project because I've known him for 13 years and I trust uh, his ins and outs and his expertise. So that's the foundation of what we've built. With that foundation, uh, we're able to work together to deliver for our group in the diaspora. Because one of the hardest things is, is to pull these deals out, uh, especially when all parties are not connected. All five of us uh, represent a group of five black men dedicated to making sure that we make sure everybody have legal land and everything that they need to build what they need to build and be free without all kind of stress and things like that. And the most important thing is to make sure we have legal paperwork with our legal name on it, land deed, 99-year lease, and things like that. Uh, so some of those documentations is what we're going to go through. And scrolling down is this uh, general conference call information. Uh, if you want to just dial in or want to just click and view the information from the screen, which is ideal because when we do these conference calls, a lot of what we do is uh, screen sharing. And the first uh, thing you're going to see, because I was just working my way around this conference uh, newsletter and just replacing some of the old documentation with new ones. So I decided to replace videos and documents uh, with uh, pictures and then leaving some of the other pictures. So right, right here what you have is a uh, is Black Star Pan-African Community uh, Incorporation. And the terminology LBG is there's a few new uh, I should say, a new incorporation um, 
that uh, Ghana has. And um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take a take a few seconds and look it up. That way, I can read it off. It's very interesting. This is uh, this is a new um, incorporation act. So, as we got our new business incorporation, I'm learning a whole lot more of what Ghana is, has in place. And what I also like to say I'm proud of is the fact that being in Ghana from 2006 to now, I've seen the growth in the country and all of the right things for 14 straight years. I feel like this is the best country for us to do this project in. There's other countries that's close, but this is ideal. We have all the momentum to do it. But uh, what it is, uh, it's uh, limited by guarantee. And so those are the different things that they have, like before, you have like limited uh, corporation or here in America we know it as limited liability corporation. So it's in that subgroup of uh, uh, corporation. So that's what that means if you're looking um, at it and you see the LBG at the end because like in some situations someone may see it LLC. Like that's what our Africa for Africans have at the end, uh, LLC. And then you see that it's uh, covered under the uh, Companies Act of 2019. So those are things that uh, individuals, uh, we can also look up to get ourselves more familiar with uh, business and corporation. But uh, I share that to let everyone know that uh, this organization or this community that we're building is a community that's built based on business mindset that we're looking to use our investment in the community to actually build, make it an enterprise. You know, different parties of us can come together and do business together, trying to get us in a mindset of ownership, a mindset of being investors and putting our money together. A lot of times, you know, like in our current communities that we live in, uh, we see everyone else but are the business owners you know, from, you know, you know, from the, the, the stores um, to the gas station to the malls to the, the enterprises to the corporate building to the factories and, and so on and so on. And we see lack of ownership for us. So, when we started talking about we're going to uh, live and do business in Africa, it was always about uh, this black corporate economic. And as we scroll down, this is the new current grid uh, site map of our community. Uh, and this is based on a 15-acre uh, land survey. And with the land survey, the best thing I can do at this uh, moment is when you're on our website, africafoodafricans.org, and uh, you click on uh, Black Star Repatriation and Pan African Community, and it's like right there on the main menu in the home link, right under the home link. And once you do that, you'll see uh, about 12 different articles. So the one that you're going to click on is it's going to say Site Map, Land Survey, and GPS. So all of those articles are breaking up into sub explanation to give overview of the entire uh, community itself. Uh, so since we're on this part. Uh, once you, um, you you'll see the site map, and now uh, but once you uh, scroll down, what you're going to see is the land survey for the 15 acres of land, and the land survey for the 50 acres of land, and the next thing beyond that is the like the land search, and that's what you'll see on the next. If I went all the way down to this page and click on next, it would just load up to that page. Uh, so once you scroll down, but even when, before you scroll all the way down, I have another uh, land survey uh, which shows the 15 and the 15 acres combined. And so for those who are looking at the screen, uh, Sharon, that's uh, right there. But I have this all on the website for individuals to take their time, click on the Black Star link and work their way down and click on each link and read the details and that will cover 100% of the presentation. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of time to cover all those details. So that's what you have here on this uh, page on the website. Uh, uh, so let me get back to the newsletter. So also this newsletter shows current plots at that moment that were available for those who are looking at it. I'm showing it from a perspective of letting individuals know that most of these plots are taken, but we do have about 12 left. Um, that's not the updated list um, Some because people have moved around as of today. And so for individuals, especially for individuals who want to build within two months, we can work everything out for them to build within two months. And, and, and as long as they follow the full flow of everything that needs to be done, uh, because the main thing is, 
We spent the whole year working on all the legal aspects of the community that we have. Land survey, land search, getting our 99-year lease, having the chief write us a memorandum of understanding uh, for the agreement, then getting his, uh, then making payments and getting paid in full receipts, and just collect, collecting all of the uh, documentation that we need for the land itself. Uh, so that's why we're able to just get people to where they actually want to be, uh, where you go to the land, the land is graded, it's laid out, it's marked, uh, you pick uh, your plot that you want, um, you get the survey, the money that you sent, and then you start surveying it. Um, then you, you, you're working on your building plans at the same time. And then once those things are completed, you get your building permit, and then you can build. You know, so those are the phases that uh, we're in, uh, and it took uh, some work, but just happy to see that we can start building. So right now, the first two people that we have is in plot number 20 and plot number 21. Uh, they're going to be building uh, between this month and next month once they finalize their building uh, permit and building plans and things like that. And so all of those things are required for you to communicate with the builder or communicate with the surveyor. And these are all people that, um, that we know directly. So uh, you can always reach out to me and I can help you communicate and connect with them. And they're all, and everyone in the entire connection of this uh, community is working on your behalf to make sure that you can build, you can live your African dream. So the best thing I always tell everyone that's joining our group is to join with good faith, good energy, be a part of the work and solution and keep the drama away and things like that because it's just one of those situations where you want people to be clear and everything that way because people, you know, are people. People are going to you know, change their minds. So the main thing of what we want everyone to do when you read all the information, and if you don't have an application or email, I can send one to you. But in the application email, there's a full overview after, which covers all of the details of the project, and you have to sign it, and also as a cancellation and a refund policy. And we all let everyone know, regardless of whatever, that is what we go by. So when you confirm plots and then a receipt is sent to you for those plots, and then you decide to change your mind, uh, the ref refund policy is reflected based on the plots that you accepted and say, this is what I want, and then paying on it, and you receive a receipt. And so you just send an email, and we just reply back to the email and things like that because we understand that people change their minds. Only thing that we don't want anyone to do is to give us a hard time by anything and go back and forth. Because one thing about me, I'm an honest man. I'm not going to cheat anyone. I've been in this business too long. Uh, yeah, and to, to, you know, to jeopardize my reputation for trying to be dishonest. Uh, you, know? you know, So I'm telling people, be clear that what we're doing is the policy. Don't start talking about other things that's irrelevant and things like that. And, and that's the issue that I have when we're dealing with, some, you know, with people. People have to learn to respect the policy, leadership, organization, uh, professionalism, and business. And we sign contracts or sign agreements and things like that. So it's one thing I've, got, I've always had to stress with people because in the same thing when we do our Africa tours, sometimes we have a tour for 30, 40 people ready to go and end up being like 15, 20 people, and it's what it is. You have to deal with these things based on the fact that you have cancellation and refund policy, which is a must because people are going to change their minds and people are going to claim that they didn't know. So you sometimes you even have to go as far as what we have, to, we have had to do in this community. I have everyone sign the overview of the community, which includes the cancellation and refund policy, but also sign the bylaws. That way they're clear on certain structure that we actually have a structure of operating as an organization to build a community. So those are things that I just, without a doubt, have to always stress with everyone. And I'm definitely going to get to the point where we go to the price and things like that. Uh, once uh, you scroll down somewhere, you see a conference called Topics. So uh, right there, you'll see documents, videos, pictures. You'll see the link that I just talked about, the link for Backstar Repatriation and Pan-African Community on our website. Then the Facebook group page right there, this one is the, it's a public uh, group page because it's a public conference call. So all of the updates is also posted there. And then our YouTube videos, um, we just have a nice playlist with all the public videos which includes conference calls and includes all the videos on the land with December 2019 and December 2020, citizenship conference, business conference, things like that. 
it's over 50 something videos uh, of the 15 plus months since we've been in existence. Everything has been documented. So when people make it seem like they don't have any updates on what's going on, you can see the documentation and you can see the updates on the website and you can see the updates on the, the Facebook page. And we do that because people who are serious about their business, they would say, hey, yeah, these guys are just group know what they're doing and they're being active and keeping updates. And then, cause, and then you can just look at someone who may say something else and like, okay, well, you're not, you know, you're not plugging yourself into the information. And then for those of us that's actually in the group, we have you on a, a private WhatsApp group where I'm always posting updates and letting people know, letting our group know everything that's going on. So letting everyone know that it's a serious business and we only want the best of our people to come and join and give good energy because I'm telling you, doing this kind of business, uh, us building community and needing people to be all hands on deck and teamwork is the most difficult thing ever. And that's why you ask, where's all the free land that the chiefs have been given to Africans in the diaspora for the last few decades? What have we as a people done with it? And I'll say nothing. And I can give you a few different examples throughout even Ghana um, because I'm always studying those things. I've worked with some of those groups also. It doesn't get built because of internal drama, mismanagement, and people with you know, bad energy. Uh, so we tell everyone, you know, if we want to see this done, we all have to be on our best diplomatic behavior working together. You have issues, you talk about it, resolve it, you move forward. And like I mentioned, if you want to leave a group and things like that, the thing of it is, is the cancellation policy. Like we should have no arguments about that because it tells you clearly uh, what's not refundable and things like that. So I have serious issues when people just want to just beef about everything, you know, and things like that. We're not going to build what we need to build that attitude. And me personally, I'm not going to let any individuals or any amount of people destroy what we're building. You know? This project is also investing for my family and, you know, and people who I've known for many years. And we're trying to deliver to the highest level. And we're asking everyone is to be respectful to everything that we're doing to the highest level. And if you can't feel or bring that energy there, then no one has to join uh, what we're doing. But if you are... That's what we expect, and nothing less, you know. And I'm saying that because these things aren't without a challenge, which you understand and expect. Like I mentioned about changing mind, but some of the stuff is literally unacceptable. Because after a while, you know, we have to just move forward strong, you know. So I've been throughout the situation over a period of time to work together with groups so we can build you know, a real community in Africa. And this is. What, where we are right now, where we got the land and we can literally start building right away and have the chief, have the lawyers, have all the people in place and everyone has give their blessing and confirm everything. This is as legit and organized as possible. You don't have to deal with no land guards. You don't have to deal with no litigation. You don't have to deal with any of those things. You spent a year and three months making sure all those things are taken care of and there's a lot of money spent and put in place to get us there. And I'm so proud that we're here and now just looking for other people who actually are looking for a nice piece of land to live in, and also with a group of people who have great community ethics. So in the overview itself, it's going to talk a lot about uh, you know, who's allowed to join us, who is not, and things like that. It just breaks it all down. All right, so let me scroll on to, um, and then I'm going to go through these topics. So number one, uh, what I was talking about was um, and I keep on changing these on different uh, things, whether it's the newsletter or on Facebook. Uh, we have literally uh, 11 plots remaining. And uh, the 11 plots remaining, I'm going to read it off from my active list. And these things may change based on people moving things around. It is uh, 2, 3, 4, 13, 15, 16, 18, 19, 27, 32, 46. So those are the plots that uh, we have available. And uh, once um, you receive the application email and you fill out the application and fill out the requirements and submit all the documents, uh, we can just uh, connect you one of those plots. For those who are interested and you just want to select one right now and then you want to jump on the paperwork uh, right after, that's absolutely fine. Uh, I don't know what's going to last, and you know, but nevertheless, once these are finished, then we're going to start uh, working on 
the best way to lay out uh, phase number two, which is being paid for right now, and uh, the legal basic process search and uh, survey is completed, and consultants and the people we need to pay has been paid to get ready to, you know, make their mark to where we can just get it all connected and individuals can start selecting their plots and start building. Uh, so that's uh, where we are with that situation. And then uh, the more people we have to phase uh, two, then we get to the point where once we have certain numbers, we can literally just start clearing the land and getting things uh, set up. It's no different from what we did with the first uh, you know, 15 acres. We started uh, accepting payments, started getting things together. Next thing you know, we're all done. Uh, so we try to do as many things as possible at the same time. Uh, that way, uh, everything uh, can just move nice and uh, smooth, and multiple things can get done at the same time. All right, uh, so um, what I have here also, I just put notes in uh, all the topics that I have this way. I could just get right to the point. So two, the community will be built in two phases or more. Uh, once we just see where the 50 acres is going, we can also just expand out. But uh, the main thing uh, that uh, Nana Haiti mentioned was that he has 100 acres for industrial development. So that's just beyond us. Um, and so that includes us and, and anyone else that's out there uh, that wants to, that like the area uh, and want to do certain things, uh, you know, we can also assist in this the arrangement of meeting the chief and so on. Because we know it's going to take a lot more people and other groups also to develop that unique area, which is two miles away from the beach. Uh, so a little bit about the uh, the plots. Uh, so the phase one of the 15 acres are 60 plots. So 50 of the 60 plots is residential, and the 10 we're going to use it for mainly for the business uh, center, the community center, and also a little park social area. Uh, so that's what we have uh, set up on the on the grid, and all of these plots are 80 by 100 feet uh, for a total of 8,000 square foot. Now, phase two, uh, it's uh, 200 plots, so the breakdown, which can be adjusted, is uh, uh, 50 acres uh, uh, for residential and business projects. So this includes uh, 20 plots for farming and maybe a lot more, uh, probably closer to 32, 120 for residential, 8 for apartments slash condos, 30 for uh, on-site commercial uh, investment, uh, 2 plots for community store, 3 for medical center, 4 for education slash training building, Three for maintenance facility and ten for like for additional park, community center, and business center. The same as what we have in phase uh, one. So those are the projections that we have. And once we work together in committees, we can you know, focus on the different things that we can focus on to help ourselves as a group to make these decisions to make all of this work and laid out. So we're just going to basically go from a layout and explain that layout to the next phase and just keep working on it little by little. And all of this is a process for us to learn and understand this project from the ground up. All right, cool. And uh, this one talks about application and reservation. So uh, whether it's phase one or phase two, the prices is all the same. And you can literally just fill out what you need to fill out. And uh, you can make this decision now or later. Uh, but while you're processing that decision and you're making payments on it, we're making payments on the land, so we want you to be clear that you are you want this land because once again everything reflects the policy, and I have to keep reiterating that because somehow I don't understand how people have been around this information for so long, and sometimes they don't get it. So we try to write everything down, and we try to repeat everything as best as possible. Uh, so the total land cost is three thousand uh, dollars, and that includes a five hundred dollar administrative cost, which covers legal representation, administration representation, uh, consultant. Also includes uh, money we put together to get the land clear. It's a lot of land clearing and a lot of land clearing costs. So um, that's one of the big part of administrative costs. So that is uh, $3,000. And I do have a note, maybe it's not on here, uh, but on the website uh, for the price increase to 3500 March 1st. And so that will include the administrative costs. So the land cost will be 3000 and the administrative cost will be 500 
a total of 3,500. The other cost that you have is your per plot survey of 350 and then land registration of 700. Uh, so that will be 4,050 currently and then it will be 4,550 in the uh, spring. So that is the price flow that you'll see uh, once you go on the website and you click on getting started and it goes through you know, it goes through this the price breakdown, what's included, and things like that. That way, you're clear on it. So the link that you saw up there that represent the you know, community link information. That's all it does. It just has all of the breakdown of information, so you're clear completely. Uh, so we have our business incorporation and tax ID number. All right, I'm just going to scroll through a few of these real quick and then open things up a question. Uh, six, we talked about a 99-year lease. So we do have a uh, memorandum of understanding for the 15 acres and the 50 acres, just agreeing on the price of the land and the terms of the land. The 15-acre one is closed, so we still have to work with the, um, the terms of the 50 acres. Now, as far as the 99-year lease, we have one for the 15 acres because we paid our money and we did everything that we agreed on, so we're set. Yeah, let me just uh, repeat that. So for the 99-year lease, uh, we have it for the 15 acres, and once we make some more payments and get further into the contract uh, with the 50 acres, then we'll get one for the 50 acres. Uh, and that is one of the documents that we need when we're submitting for our, you know, our land indenture. You're putting your survey, you're putting uh, your 99-year lease, and you're putting your land registration. You're putting all those things together to get your legal document. Uh, so that's, you know, so... Uh, the chief worked it from a 50-year lease since we're not Ghanaian citizen to a 99-year lease. So that was very nice of him to look out and give us the same term as he would give anyone else, uh, the Ghanaians that's uh, getting land from him. But as far as the uh, the 50 acres, again, we have to literally you know, work on that process to get that done. So right now everything is good for the 15 acres. and for those who have been with us trying to show you a flow of what we did for the 15 acres, we're doing for the 50 acres, and we're just repeating the process so we can all just get clear and learn this business as far as uh, land acquisition, land management, um, you know, real estate development, and get, get us more together as a group to invest in ourselves in Ghana. All right, so we covered our seven land survey and registration. Um, we talked about land clearing and pillars completed. And uh, the WhatsApp uh, private group and the committees is what made me looking to build. So for those who join us, uh, there's a list of committees below. Uh, select a committee, and with that committee, let's work with who is the organizer, and we're looking to build the committee energy fresh to where we just work together and communicate together and build good energy. Um, and, and it's one of those things that you want to build now that we can get in the land. We're clear and we're focused. And then Tenna talk about uh, getting started, membership application, and things like that. So once you click on this link, it just takes you right there to all of the uh, documentation for the community. And you can just take your time, read each article one by one. And then if you have the email, then the overview itself is most of what the website information show. It's just broken up into segments. But the uh, PDF uh, that you'll see on the email is a... Uh, eight to nine page PDF and it covers all of those things. So just uh, we have it right there from the email and also right there from the website. But the website is not going to have the attachments and sample information and attached application and things like that. So the ideal thing we want everyone to do is just have the website information, download all the files and just work to them. And then for those who are just not ready to commit and not ready to even get an email just sent out or want any information, you can just process it from the uh, website. So it's the same information. The goal is just to give everyone access to as much information as possible to share or to look at or to investigate or research before they make the decision. But once you make the decision, we want you to be clear. Let's stay committed and stay the course of what we're doing and get this done. I've been through 15 months of you know, a nice, smooth, here, but you know, hit bumpy roads here and there on things where things get delayed as far as paperwork and things like that. Uh, those are all things that we can survive and things that we don't need to freak out about. 
and then this is a process where everyone that I'm working with I trust dearly and directly and you know it's one of those things where we have to be able to find people together that we can work together and be honest and deliver for the rest of our our brothers and sisters so that's what this group is all about and um, uh, the part where I stop at is where we have the overview and the importance of the committees and then give the committee names and then I'll just open up for questions. Overview and importance of committees. The key to us developing Black Star repatriation and Pan-African community will be the effective use of the 10 committees below. It is mandatory for all community members to be on at least one committee. Everyone must participate including joining group and committee video calls. A committee member's contribution and participation on the committees will determine its success or failure. So we are literally responsible for our success and we literally have to take accountability, every single one of us, to whether things work for us or not. Uh, see sometimes where uh, we look for a scapegoat, looking for reason or excuses, um, it's unacceptable. It's all of us together. You know, this shouldn't be difficult for us to connect, communicate, work things out. And that's why I'm a person that I have everything in writing because I don't want no one to say that, oh, I wasn't clear on this. You have to be clear because we have everything written and we've gone over everything over and over and over. Uh, so we just ask anybody just to be respectful and process everything and be clear once again. All right, and uh, the 10 committees are business and professional affairs, safety, security, and surveillance, education, cultural and social affairs, sustainable energy and utilities, medical and wellness, planning and development, maintenance and landscaping, waste management and recycling, agriculture and livestock, bylaws and home affairs. So those, those are right there, those are our committees. And as you scroll down, you see um, the most popular video I have right now from our Ghana trip, Black Star, Pan-African Community, Ready for Building and Development. So that is about a, a nice video where I'm recording us right there coming up on the land, the same land you saw last time where we had to walk through all these bushes and we had to walk the long way. Uh, we're able to drive right up on a new street that, you know, that we had to pay to get to cut in and everything. And just get it built up. So when I mean we're building everything up from the ground up, it's like literally from the ground up. So what you see just was never cleared ever in the history before. It was just always like this. And now we're here to clear and develop it. Uh, so that's the video right there. And got a picture with our group from uh, from 2019 um, below. And you scroll down some more. Got got a few more videos. Got the video with our business conference, and then got the video with our citizenship conference. So those are things that are posted on this newsletter. It's kind of long, but this newsletter has full details of what you're looking for with clarity that way you know what you're getting yourself into and you know how we started. Uh, so that's what I have set up and I'm one of the people, I get up and work on this thing consistently every day, putting all the elements in place to make sure that we can just, when we're ready, we just you know, do what we need to do and, and, you know, and get our, our land built just like two brothers that are there right now. Uh, one is there with his wife. And they have literally came to Ghana with me in December 2019 journey and sat there and saw the chief, met the chief for the first time and met myself and connected with us all, at the, all for the first time. And within one year, they have literally get, put themselves in a position where they are building their homes there. So some people are literally ready like that. And I want to make sure that we do everything in our best that, to help everyone, but also want to let everyone know that it's there. You know, they have to be accountable for certain things, like calling your builders and communicating with us, and you know, and all those things. Be very active, and you know, the better you can do that, the better we can help you. So that's what all of this uh, information that you're looking at uh, represent. As you scroll down, I even show the latest thing that we got uh, document, which is the land commission search, showing that our 50 acres is clear, and that's right under the uh, citizenship video. Uh, so those are some of the things that uh, we just have on this newsletter. Uh, but yes, family, I'm one person, I have lots of documentation for us. I always, always want to make sure that we have everything that we need to make a right decision. And so with all of that being said, we will get you to a process to where you have your land papers for your land. And you can build and 
we're people that's been in this business for a long time, and none of us are going to destroy our reputation for dealing with uh, uh, crooks, criminals, or people that's going to mess all of us up. So on that note, uh, family, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmute for our questions. Uh, greetings, family. We're in the mute all mode, so what you have to do is press star six to unmute yourself. But before you do, what I want to do is bring in uh, Brother Chaz from our Black Star Pan-African Community Group. Uh, he's one of the uh, vice president of the group. And I just want to get him to share some uh, words of uh, this, where we are and uh, what we're looking to connect with the other members so we can do this together. Uh, Chaz, I'm, I'm uh, unmuting you right now. Okay, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I hear you loud and clear. All right, good enough. Yeah, welcome, um, members of Quaba. Uh, yeah, is it what he was, what uh, what Brother Bomani was mentioning about with regard to joining the committees? It's a very important. It's very important that we um, that we have some meeting of minds going on. That that we um, that we that we, that we interrelate with each other. That's how we survive. That's how we've had. That's how we have survived throughout the throughout the centuries, um, and even centuries before the the the, the great kidnapping. Um, so it's important that you all reach out to each other and get a chance to understand each other, if not know each other, to find out just what, and, and also, um, and in doing that, focusing on, on, uh, uh, what kind of skills and talents and ideas that you all can share. Uh, that's how this group of build, uh, as brother Romani was mentioning, you know, we have this, we have, we have this, we have this acreage. Part of that acreage is for our business community. Part of it is for our, uh, residential, of course. And then the other part is where, we're, where, where we will be developing later on. Uh, we need to think. Uh, we, we need to think in terms of that uh, for future, for future uh, kind of thinking, um, in a way that uh, um, that that is going to be innovative. Uh, we're doing something very special. This is this is um, this is this is ex extremely special, and I think this is our time um, as. Um, as a community, we have to think individually as community members, uh, like family. We're, we're, when you really break it down, we're really working to be roommates under this big acreage, and we can do a whole bunch of stuff there. Uh, you can let your, imagina your imagination run wild with some stuff, you know, um, things that you may that you may have or maybe have never considered, which is important. Well, why we should uh, be able to communicate with each other. The um, communication piece is extremely important because that has to do with social inf infrastructure. That way we can know how to get along with each other. We're not going to agree with each other all the time. Uh, I seldom, uh, I should say seldom, but um, this time I don't, I, don't, I don't agree with myself, and that's because I question things about what I think. That's an important thing for your own growth and development. If you want to cultivate yourself, you question yourself. And... It's good to have that kind of uh, interaction, you know. Then you can bounce it off of somebody else and see what they think, and they might bring in another another facet or dimension that you didn't even think of. So this is a very important thing. Um, we're looking to go in there and build some stuff, to construct some stuff, and imagine what it'd be like for your children, your grandchildren, great grandchildren, neighbors, and even the the, the diaspora in general. And for the and for the indigenous brothers that have been there for generations upon generations that you're connected to, for you for, for them to see see this this mark that you've made, this is construction mark that you've made, that's pretty big stuff. Are there any questions at all? I could excellent chat. So, um, family, the line is open. Uh, if anyone who have any questions uh, for us, uh, this um. Uh, Star six, I'll meet yourself, uh, give your name, where you're calling from, and your question. Hi, Bamani. This is Ahuva uh, uh, in Atlanta. How are you? Uh, greetings, uh, Ahuva. I had a question. Uh, you, you mentioned apartments and condos. Is that something that is going to be happening, like, way later down the line, or have you already set up something to kind of, um, discuss building, and if so, are you doing that under a, an investment level as far as um, investors coming in to um, 
um, purchase an apartment complex on that level, or how is that going to be set up? Uh, yes, it is a little bit of both uh, people who that uh, we can deal with uh, our partners who want to come in and create um, you know, create apartments and things like that. But yeah, this is a few years. This is in phase two, and this is uh, you know we're just trying to allocate um, plots that could be used for the main things that we need to use them for to make sure that those things are in the the mix. Uh, so uh, a few years from now, um, the, a few years from now, more so than anything else. Uh, we're trying to get more people on phase uh, two, so we can. So the main thing what you have to do with this is you have to you have to you're collecting payments uh, for those who are, you know, basically reserving plots. Uh, that way we can pay for the land, and when, once the land is paid for, we you know we have full out right to get it clear and build what we need to build on it, and we can <coughs> get access to clearing and building on it and doing certain things if you know three quarters of it is paid. But that's the main thing that uh, we're doing right now. It's 50 acres, so it's a little pricey. Uh, so that's why we're looking to. That's why we have 120 residential plots uh, set. Uh, that way, if we can even fill up half of those, we can start moving on some other things. Now, so it just all depends on that. Okay. Now, is that 50 acres? Is that closer to the um, beach than the Phase One um, area? Uh, no, uh, the 15 acres is what's closer to is closer to the beach. Okay. Uh, where you see that the community center and the park, that's that direction is where the beach and things will be uh, two miles from there. Okay. For that phase one, you still have 10 plots available? Uh, yes, and anyone who ever wants the latest can always ask me on WhatsApp or email and I'll just leave you send it. And then as a change, because uh, you know, people are communicating and people are changing, so I just have an active list here, but right now it's 11 uh, plots available. And okay. you do have some up front also, along with some in the back. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. We have a few people on the call. So that's what I went through. Um, and then for those who ever want to go back through, that newsletter has a whole lot more information also. So you can just go check it out. And then it gives you the link to you know, the YouTube page. Uh, or the YouTube playlist, and also the Facebook link. And then on the Facebook, you also are going to have the the pictures of the land, which I'm going to add another um, uh, another few galleries based on the trip that we just did. We took a lot of photos, so I'm trying to organize those to upload. And then and it, the link would also be, you know, it's always just added into, like if you go to the website and click on it, and then you, you'll see pictures and videos on, on your List all of the information for Black Star community, and so and every time we do certain things, uh, those playlists will be uploaded. Excuse me, playlists will be updated. All right, uh, someone has your line open. All right, perfect. I put everybody back in mute. All. Bomani, I had a question. Deborah here. All right, Deborah, go ahead. Um, I didn't hear the answer as to how far away from the beach is the 50 acres. The 50 acres and the 15 acres is the same location. It's, it's connected together. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so it's, uh, two, it, it, it's, both of it is two miles away from the beach. It's all connected. So what I have on the uh, website on the site survey is a survey showing the 15 and the 50 acres separate and also another map showing both of it connected together. That's a given uh, realistic uh, drawing of it. So the security and the development for the business center, that will all encompass both plots, both uh, phases, that same security system and educational system and business center, that will encompass taking care of both parcels, both phases? Yes, that is on both uh, phases. Uh, most of those things are on phase too, because we have a whole lot of land, um, and the 15, that beginning part is just to have a foundation connected to where we can get our business and get things going right now. Okay, my next question is, is there a code of conduct, conduct for like a, uh, um, 
development. In, in other words, can we do um, prefab homes that we design and have them um, shipped in? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the main thing about anything that you're looking to do, you just want to make sure that everyone get it on their, their part of the property, make it look nice and neat, and it's all good, whether prefab or container homes. Just trying to give everybody a chance to just do something flexible because the thing of it is if you ask 200 people, if you ask 100 people what kind of homes they're going to build, you're going to get about, you're going to get in the variation about at least 5, 10, 20, 10, you know, 10, 20 different styles. Uh, so yeah. uh, so uh, the goal is just to see how it looks and just make it look nice and neat. Uh, we have a nice grid, so if we all get in the grid and get our homes with nice roofs and everything, everything should look mm -hmm. good. Okay, awesome. Great. So I'm going to take a deeper dive at understanding because uh, I'm, I'm very interested. Uh, yes, uh, we just came back from the country and uh, did a few back-to-back -back days. Like on a Sunday, we did a citizenship conference at night, so now we have a nice little email we can send to everyone and say, this, this is our folks in Ghana. Uh, you can submit your citizenship to them. They're the ones that made the first set of us got citizenship and They've been able to get all my partners and people I know there who have been there citizenship, so we trust them with everything. And then the next day we did the uh, business conference, so we had the builders, we had shippers, uh, we had you know, you know, very resourceful uh, business people and people who just, they're trying to see what's going on in this world of black people leaving from America because every, everywhere else in the world, you know, you're, you're told that uh, America is that great nation that you want to go to and then people see us leaving. <laughs> they want to know what's going on. So, so yeah. we had all kind of people there, and then we went to the land, and like all these Ghanaians are like, what are these people? <laughs> so they came out, and uh, we commissioned a toilet that two of our members put their money where their mouth is, which was the most impressive thing. Because a lot of times, sometimes we go there like, oh, these people, they don't have no bathroom, and it's where we can use it. I got to go to this old lady's bathroom. And you know, sometimes we're very scornful and disrespectful, but these two, this, this husband and wife, put their money where their mouth is. I'm still shocked. And organized with my brother Kwabna Abaka, our tour guide, our consultant, and with the chief and everything. Next thing you know, and this was December last year, uh, December 2019, and in 2020 when we came, they commissioned a toilet public, three set of restroom for men and three for women, uh, right there in the middle of the community, and uh, where anyone can use. Very impressive. Uh, so we have things like that uh, uh, also showing in. Just. Uh, you know, we're out there, and the people like, okay, this is the folks in America and things like that, because this is this is a very country uh, area. It's not, you know, it's far away from Accra. So, yeah, you know, you have a more cultural people there, and they don't people don't really see the flow of what people see in Accra with celebrities and people like that. So, you know, I guess they're kind of like they're celebrity, but it was just a nice welcome energy uh, there, and just happy that we were able to record it and share, um, and just to show people that were. You know, it's, it's these things, you know, people are not used to seeing, like, people moving to Africa, building and doing all stuff. So we're trying to do it to where we're showing every single piece, every single thing as best as possible. That way people can uh, connect. So, yeah, so that was that right there. Awesome. Uh, did you see all the videos and everything, all of our highlights? Uh, it was a little bit of much, but... Yeah, I'll be diving deeper tonight and tomorrow. All right, uh, perfect. Uh, so family and everyone else, that playlist, all them videos on there from 2019 to 2020. 2019 to 2020. All right, so um, if that's it, Deborah, let me mute you and let me see who else have any questions. Uh, so yeah, so family, what I was talking about is our playlist on YouTube for all of our videos. Omari. Uh, go ahead. Yes, good evening. Uh, Orande from uh, Washington, D.C. How are you? Uh, greetings, Orande. I'm doing all right. Uh, how about yourself? Great, great. Yeah, I came in kind of late, so forgive the tardiness, but um, I caught uh, the, uh, I guess, the, the meat of it. Um, and I'm going through the uh, the email with uh, all the other details. So I uh, like Mr. Bora. I'll be doing a deeper dive. Um, but I noticed that uh, you said uh, as far as the plots, um, what it says is is uh, what is it eight? Each one is eight thousand square feet. 
Uh, yes, sir, that's correct, guy. 80 by 100. Okay. All right. So, um, so then I guess is that like what, um, what is there like a standardized size for a home or style or is it? Uh, no, because I, I know I, like some three D, some three D printers that can you know do um, build homes too. Um, I know the other young lady was talking about prefab and um, yeah, we stuff like you, that. You have enough space. You have um, you know, you have a quarter of an acre to build your quarter home. Quarter of an acre, okay. So unless you're building like a mansion, uh, which you need you know two lots, uh, you you're able to build your typical homes there, um, like a two floor, you know, four bedroom, three bathroom, um, or like a yep. three four two bathroom ranch uh, that spreads okay. out wider, it will still fit in there because I look at my house um, before uh, that I had a three bedroom, two bathroom ranch, uh, something small that was on like a point fourteen acres and still had mm -hmm. space. So it's, it's, it's enough to build what you need to build and um, once you get a uh, plot survey, then you can also get up to your builder and they can build what they need to build around that, those dimensions. Gotcha. So is that a local builder that you use or? Uh, you can choose what? any, you can bring a builder, you can choose a builder. Only thing this one, uh, everyone to know that just make sure you're clear on, on contract what you're doing with that person so you don't have any drama. And then we have the builders that we use, and that's basically people that we recruit. That's way we, that way we can keep someone accountable. Um, and gotcha. We can also have people that we can build relationship with, too. So if we have six builders and four of them really work out, we can keep them on a long term because everything that we're looking at, we have to keep on looking at the fact that we have to, we're expanding to the 50 acres because that's where all of our things like you know, agriculture, we can use at least a few of those acres, you know, a good mm -hmm. five to eight acres to farm whatever we need to farm. And plan the right. and so on. Okay. All right. And then, as far as uh, like the committees and things, um, once you um, what is, uh, like when you join the the, the alliance, um, is it the um, is it like a membership that you have to sign, and then you jump on a committee or two, or is there like a limit? To the amount of committees you can join. I mean, I know you know each. You, you don't want to have one person spreading itself too thin, but yeah, one or two. Uh, I recommend one committee. Um, if individuals want to do two, two is fine. Don't recommend anyone doing any more than two. But yes, you can do three, four, and things like that, and uh, mm -hmm. that's uh, fine. But once you fill out the application and fill out the paperwork and things like that, uh, we just uh, and everything looks good. Spending your background check with it. Add you to the uh, WhatsApp group, and then we just uh, whatever committee you select, I just we add you to that committee. And then if there's um, a person that's organizing it, we'll send them your information, and they'll add you, and so on. And then you know it's just you're communicating with the people in that committee, the most mm. part, and that's who you're working with. And then we have the group itself, where what I'm doing in the group is posting updates on the group. It's not necessarily for people to reply or people to post messages, unless it's updates in reference to us developing a community dealing with, you know, de you know, dealing with our group project updates and research. Other than that, mm -hmm. we're posting updates about wh whatever is going on and whatever updates that we have, conference calls, um, videos that we just posted, uh, what's going on with uh, this document, that document. Um, right. I guess, we, you know, there's anything that's updated, so you're just getting consistent updates. Uh, so that's one mm -hmm. thing that we have to set up. And then if you need to communicate, um, I'm here. And then I got our guys here in Ghana available to communicate. So there's a nice, well-organized military system that we set up. That's just you know, a serious business to get the you know to get the work done. Right. Yeah. No. Absolutely. No. No. I, I, I know the caliber you got. You got. You straight shooter. So uh, if you say it, I believe it. Uh, and then lastly, um, I saw on the um, oh the. Uh, I guess the plots are on like a, a you said like a ninety a, a ninety nine. Uh, yes, I uh, got a ninety nine year lease from Chief uh, Nana Haiti uh, himself, um, and that um, we we all sign off on. Uh, we sign off on it. Is a group sign off on it, and that was stamped by the court, uh, and that means that uh, that along with the rest of the paperwork, we have the land survey, the land search, 
that we have legal rights to that land, and then we pay them. Mm-hmm. So that means that's our land uh, for 99 years at least, and then from there on, um, you know, our descendants uh, will negotiate it to work it out, and we have to just keep in faith that you know our future will work it out. But us getting ourselves established is ideal. Uh, okay, and I, 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 65 acres. I understand. We can do so much with that right there. Okay. Yeah, because that was my next question. Was I mean I know the majority of us probably well won't be here in 99 years unless you know new technology. But uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, that was that, that was the the, the question. Um, and then, is there? Uh, do you know if there would be an opportunity or? Uh, well, I guess that's kind of put the cart before the horse. You no, want to no. get it on the ground? Oh no! I was no, gonna no, say no. maybe like a opportunity in 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 between uh, in the meantime in between time to actually um, you know, purchase or, you know, gain ownership over that land. But, you know, again, I guess that's, you know, like I said, putting the cart before the horse is just get on the ground and get things established and then, like you said, cross that bridge when you get to it. Yeah, the hard, the main thing is this, uh, is the payments on the land. So we have, got, so we pay for the 15, but the main thing is the 50 is a lot more so. We have to always just focus on making payments, making payments, making payments, and working that out. But once we have that paid for, we are so good, man. We can literally just uh, just develop the land and use it as we need and just build us our, you know, our small empire. Uh, but if we mm-hmm. didn't jump on that 15 acres, um, other people would have jumped on it because once I got back to the area, I was like, wow, who, who is all these people? Who got A bunch of new people got land and a bunch of other people. They're thinking the same. Oh, wow. Along, we leave in Accra, along Accra, all the way to where we are. It's about an hour and a half, two hours the most based on traffic. And then also from Cape Coast to where we are, it's about an hour and a half, two hours you know, based on traffic. Uh, so yeah. what you're looking at is two, you know, two of the main cities, Accra being the biggest, and from everything from Accra coming in the direction of Cape Coast, it is, you know, it is about, you know, majority of the development is about 30 minutes away. So as mm. those thirty, you know, next thing you know, it's gonna be right there where we are, where you have more right. things to fill up. Because when I first went to Ghana, like I tell people, I've literally seen this unfold for 14 straight years. Because you're driving on the same street to get to wherever you're going from Accra back to Cape Coast or wherever, you always gotta drive along that street. Um, mm. Say, excuse me, you always have to drive along the West African Highway, uh, which is this, you know, from Accra to Cape Coast, a long highway. Um, it's right. going to, you know, to other countries, but um, that that right there, you know, you see all the development from Accra coming all the way to, you know, wager to even where I keep on looking. Every time I see that new mall that's been there for several years, I always look like where did that thing come from? And that's what you mm. said and things like that. So, and then wherever any of us are in the U.S., you can look at where you've been at. Like I've been here for 19 years, and it's looked like the same. From, you know, a few things have changed over the, you know, the, the almost 20 years, uh, but uh, you have a standstill, and there you have a consistent. This you just, you know, you just have land being developed, and that's a good yeah. thing to get into because then we can build first infrastructure, first things, and then the biggest thing I mentioned to everyone is what you're doing is black ownership, and that's my frustration with being here in America. You, you know, you like. How does this make any sense? How can we be the first set of people who've been here forever? I'm saying we know some of the answer to that question, but also even if we know some of the answer to that question, you're still asking yourself, how could we not pull it off where we have better black ownership? Because exactly. if you call us out of a dirty anyone play in a sport or a game, you know what I'm saying? You got to do what you have to do to you know win or make it. Uh, so right, right. So build it up and then just to have somebody come come through and destroy it. Or yeah, steal it. Yeah, I mean, but but I'm also talking about a level of ownership even beyond physical ownership and you have you know you have ownership to it and investments and things like that. Uh, Any way you can, mm-hmm. you know, because there's different ways. Uh, so that's always the biggest disappointment. So what I got from that is what if we did a better focus on doing it in Africa and putting a little more energy into it and leveraging things a little bit better to where you can flip some of your resources in America and make it work in Africa and you can, you know, encourage other people. So that's where we are, uh, just getting up, working together, figuring it out on our own. And I'm always telling people that when you do these things, 
you may start out with 100 people and you may end up having 50 people. I was like, it's the nature of the situation. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's the laws of the jungle. You're going to have, not everyone going to have that forceful energy to keep it going, but we have the best chance right now in Africa to just keep doing what we're doing as far as connecting, networking, building, and making mm-hmm. that happen. We can't stay here and then judge and look from afar and and then all we do is talking about what's going on in Africa and what, you know, why are they doing this and this and that. And I'm telling people we have the opportunity that we have right now, which I'm thankful to, you know, and, and, and Nana Haiti for just blessing us and offering us that great opportunity to be a part of our community and things like that. Mm-hmm. There's no one around stopping us from doing this together. The Ghanaians that's there, they're not stopping us. Myself and the people working, we're not stopping us. So it's, it's, it's giving us a better path to, like, do this. But if we're here, you have you have regulations, which you know these people. This is a land of regulations. So off the bat, hmm. you regulations and kill you in the court. Just just that alone. And you know they have other mm-hmm. people do other stuff like blow your stuff up, burn your stuff down, bomb your stuff. You know we've seen that. So that's what I'm saying with that. I'm not trying to like knock the hustle of our struggle in America or anywhere else in the diaspora, but saying that hey, as long as we don't deal with the the self hating us then we should have no problem. So that's what we do, man. I'm just excited that, you know, we can we can find a path because at one point when I'm, you know, when you hear you're like, man, is there a better way? <laughs> right. <laughs> There's gotta be a better you keep wanting to wake up, pinch yourself and wake up. <laughs> yeah. Walk around in the days, yeah. So that's it, brother. Yeah. Uh, let me know if you have any yeah. questions or anybody else, but go ahead. And then one more thing. I'm sorry if I'm monopolizing the time. I, oh, no, I got it, but I'm, oh, okay. Uh, and then because um, I actually have a couple of friends that are actually um, that are actually Ghanaian, uh, and they said like, I guess once you pay the money for the for the plot, then it's up to you to uh, pay f- for the construction of the home, and then you own it. I mean, is there like is it? And, and there might be a little more. Uh, complicated than um, this call, uh, you know, everything can be answered on the call, but like in terms of like taxes and stuff like that, yeah, property you, tax. Know, you do have to pay property tax, uh, which uh, friends of mine have given me different numbers, and uh, it's usually around less than 50 US dollars. Uh, I've even heard numbers of 20 and 30, uh, but that's something oh, that we have to work out. But uh, when you're dealing with land, um, to give you the full scope of it, once you find the land that you're looking for, you get a mm-hmm. And do a land survey. It's just two things that you do to make sure that the land. Um, you do a survey of the land that you're looking for first, um, based on land you have access to. And then once it's surveyed and cut, those d- dimensions and those details are sent in uh, t- uh, with a lawyer or just anyone that could represent you to do a, a search on that specific land that's grafted. And if it comes back, mm-hmm. next thing you know, you can um, you can start paying for it once you pay the chief or the person for the land. Now, they'll give you that 50-year lease if you're a non-Ghanaian citizen. If you're a Ghanaian citizen, 99-year lease. In our case, the chief decided to give us a 99-year lease. So once mm. we have a 99-year lease, now then the next thing for us to do is to literally uh, literally register the land. And then once we register, mm. that's our land. So that's kind of the, uh, the phase to go through. Uh, we're doing okay. so. We not only have to do a, a general survey, but we also have to do individual survey. And then once we register, it's being registered as a group and an individual all together. Uh, so mm. those are the situations okay. and the prices and things that I have laid out in this newsletter. Okay. All right. So it's almost like a co-op, basically. Uh, this is um, this gives you private ownership of your land and everything that you need, uh, and then you have your space and everything. But what you're doing is incorporating or encouraging corporative economics. You're telling black people that it made no sense that we all live together and live in the same area. No, we don't put our money and our resources together. So this situation yeah. forces you into this. And that's what I'm telling everyone. It may not be the best thing for everyone. So everyone has to like, read the rules, the regulation, the code of conduct. Mm. It's very strict. It's just, you know, a military organized person. I've put my energy into making sure this is organized to the highest level. And I understand. Right. The issue with some of us, we don't, we don't believe in certain order and things that I'm telling people is unacceptable. Orders, policies, and things like that is important. 
And that's what we push. We push respecting organization, leadership, and us working together and things like that. So that's the option that we'll put together. And then you have individuals out there that will sell you land. And then you just have to understand that it's up to you to get a lawyer, consultant. But we, we have that together as a group, so it gives us more flexibility because we're paying our administrative costs, and that's helping us do a whole lot because we're a group versus you as an individual paying a lawyer a few thousand dollars to do this, to mm. do that. After a while, it does add up. Uh, so, um, you know, so it, you know, it kind of helps out even though we have our own individual space and things. Uh, and then gotcha. as far as the other community part of it is, yes, you're farming and you're doing things like that together. So it's, you know, it's, it's multifaceted. Uh, you're trying to get the best resources out of a group of people. You're trying to mm-hmm. strain the economics out of it. And I feel like if we focus more on that, this, wherever we are as a people, it don't matter how poor we are or whatever, we'll start showing more and more progress. Right. Okay. All right. And then uh, is there like a, a timeline on when you're wanting to, I mean, I know, of course, uh, as soon as possible, it's probably to be the most accurate, but. In terms of building? Yeah. Uh, building, uh, the goal is for everybody to build within five years. So you want by 2026, okay. everyone to have a, their house built looking good and have a roof over it within five years. So you can start within three years, two years, one year. Uh, and it's mm. about a good one year to get your house completed, even if it takes you six months, the finalization of all kind of stuff, you know. So looking mm. at that, uh, for everybody to try to start their house within two years, and then with that pace, um, you know, we'll be finished phase one and then finish phase two like a few years later. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sounds good to me. Thank you, sir. Excellent, brother. Um, let me meet you. At the family, everybody is muted. You can press star six to unmute yourself, give your name, where you're calling from, your question. Uh, hi, Bomani. This is Ahuva again. I have a question um, for that phase one. Is that those plots, is that uh, two plots per person max? Uh, no, there's no max in it um, because if you get more than one, you know, we realize you're getting it for a, a family. Like uh, me and my family, me and my, my family of eight of us, we have eight plots together. Uh, so, but, you know, even though we're eight individuals, uh, so um, if you just need a few for your, your family, that's uh, fine. Um, but we don't want one person taking up like four or five plots. Uh, but it just all depends. But in phase two, we have a whole lot more flexibility. As, you know, people can get as many plots as they want. Uh, if they want to build big houses, mansions, all that stuff is perfect for phase two. But if you want two plots right now or three plots for your family, that's perfect. We can do that. Great. Now, um, for the price for the plots for phase one, is it going to be the same as phase two? Uh, yes, right now we have a standard one price, uh, which is uh, for whatever we're doing, and the same one one cancellation and refund policy. Uh, so that's what we have um, just upgraded on. But uh, it is uh, 2500 for the land, 500 for administrative costs, 350 for survey, and 700 for registration. And then um, March 1st, the price per plot goes up. That's the only thing that goes up. And that goes up an uh, extra 500 to make it 3000 uh, for that. Uh, so that's what we have. And I don't know the price of building permits other than I can tell you building permits is between 300 to 500 and it all depends. Uh, so for less than $5,000 is what you, it will cost you to do all those things. And then after that, you just have to factor in your cost of building. But those are all of the major costs. And then um, you know, taxes is probably twenty, thirty dollars a, a year. Um, but so those are all your literary expenses. Okay. Now um, so it's gonna be about three thousand per plot, is that correct? Uh yes, starting March uh first. But for those who lock in earlier, whatever price you lock in on, lock in on. Like some people locked in at the beginning and they just got the better deal. But uh, as time matures and things goes, and the investment goes up. So right now, yes, right now, um, and that price probably don't change right away from March. It's just 
basically giving people a heads up that it's going up. Uh, so for those who want to just make their plans, can make it and save the extra cost. Okay. Um, now, um, for those that want more than one plot, um, is there like some type of payment plan available for them? Oh, yes. Everything is in a payment plan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so um, if you want something, um, and then for everyone right now, the best way I'm communicating is also just on WhatsApp, so we have everything in a nice message. Um, so if you want to request some information on WhatsApp, you can send me a message on WhatsApp on my uh, U.S. number, and I can send you over, like, I have all of the uh, the maps and the updates of the PDF files that can be sent uh, quick, even, uh, even email also. But um, uh, everyone, uh, if you want to plot, do things are going to be, you know, things change because right now I'm just consistently sharing it. And once I finish the edits of this uh, recording, I'm sharing it out as available plots. Uh, so that's what we're dealing with today, family. All right, uh, anyone else have any questions before we close? All right, Chaz, uh, let me unmute you if you want to share a few things or... Yeah, um, yeah, it's very important that you keep up with the documents and the um, uh, that, that, that pertain particularly to our project here, to this mission. Uh, that way you have a lot of information. Um, to some of the new members, I've sent some things out. And I've sent a variety of things, but some of the things I've, I've referred to the uh, Sustainable Committee. Um, it's important that you all get involved, that you be, be involved. And that's, actually, you are involved, but you involve yourselves in it uh, to make a conscious effort to do it. Uh, we need each other. We all we got. So we have to we have to uh, figure out ways to work together and what kind of what kind of things we can do. Um, this is this is some monumental stuff. We start building some stuff just like um, the the couple that built the, uh, the 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 bathroom there. That's a pretty big thing. Yeah, that and when people start doing you stuff, you, you draw that you draw that same energy towards you. Constructive energy is is, is, a, is a very good thing. I'm sorry. What were you saying, sir? No, I'm saying that was impressive. Put your money where your mouth is. You know what I'm saying? Put your money where your mouth is. Put your fat where it's at. You know, talk is the cheapest thing we can do. We're actually doing something. If you look at some of those other groups, they don't have all that going on like we got going on. And the cool thing about it with us, we're actually working together, and that's something special in and of itself. So, you know, we're we're actually confronting something on a lot of different uh, um, uh, levels. Uh, the first thing, the, the first and most important thing is the social infrastructure where we are actually getting together to make something happen. You know, so, I mean, and, th and this is doable. This is doable. We got gray matter in our head. We got first class equipment in our, in our skull. And we got, and we got first class equipment in our hearts. All we have to do is cultivate that. And we can make a lot of stuff happen. Well said, uh, Chaz. Uh, you're quite the philosopher. Uh, always right to the point and just clear about it. So that's it, family. So that's the energy that we're sharing. Um, it's about time that we organize ourselves more as groups and invest as groups in, in, on the African continent. Uh, you know, when I'm doing a content, it just looks bad. I'm like, where's the the African diaspora presence? and reconnection. I mean, you see wonderful things. You see restaurants, business. You see certain vibes and things, but it's like, where's that group economics? Like, you know, where if you go places, you see the Indians and the Chinese, they're, they're not even playing no more. It's like every facet of where you go in the world, you see you see a representation of India and China as being like, they, they organize themselves as groups and they're just like dominating markets and, you know, and coming in strong, no mercy. You know, so, um, and as much as I talk about <laughs> both of them, uh, I just like, you know, I respect the, their movements. I respect this, you know, this people that's coming together and doing what they need to do for themselves. And I feel like that's where we're at. But uh, I feel like we have not been paying a, a whole lot of attention to Africa like we should have. The 2019 year return came, and, you know, it was a little, it was a little energy to open certain people's eyes and things like that. And people had their photo shoots and they, they, they photo ops and things like that. But it's like, where's the level of investment that we should do as group and things like that as a people? So... Uh, that's what we're doing from the small scale, and we're using our energy together uh, to get it done. Uh, so little by little, we're getting there. So before we close, I just want to find out if anyone else have any questions before we close tonight. 
our coach has uh, that seemed to be like it. So family, appreciate everyone, and we're gonna close. Everyone, enjoy the night. I'm just gonna unmute everyone. Uh, Thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you. All right, cool. Everyone can hear each other. So everyone, take care. Good night. Appreciate you calling. Uh, take a look Good at night. the again and just share it. When you're ready, just let us know and we'll add you to it and we'll keep it moving and keep you updated. Sounds good. Appreciate the information and the energy. Thank you. Yes, family. Yes, family. We'll keep it strong. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.